Welcome to Around the Dog World at our now regular New Year stop off Stoke Rochford Hall where we want to talk about a sensational 2016. No dog last year won more than two All Breed Best in Show and that's what made the year so special. So let's find out who was lucky enough to call themselves the Best in Show winner in 2016. Well, this is better, a comfy spot by the nice warm fire and my company today to talk about some great dogs, Andrew Brace and Di Johnson. It's a lovely place to be back, isn't it? We like it. It is. And nice and warm on a nice winter's day. Mm, especially where I'm sitting. <laughs> In the hot seat. And who could occupy that seat more better, effectively? Yeah. Well, as long as Mrs Johnson is kept at the correct temperature. How kind. Then, <laughs> then, then everyone's happy. That's the most important part of the day. Thank you. Um, now, we have to look back at 2016, of course. Um, we just saw a little clip there of all of last year's best in show winners. And that's quite incredible. From 26 general championship shows, we had 22 different best in show winners. Yeah. It's an incredible position to be in, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, things were very, very much spread out, um, which I think is probably healthier for the sport than having one dog that completely dominates all year. Mm -hmm. yeah. I suppose it is. I think it's quite unusual for it to be that. Um, I can't remember it being that spread. No, I can't in, either. In recent years, but I mean, it suggests that there are several dogs of equal merit mm. vying for top position. Mm. Um, but it's not just in the best in shows and group rings where we see the competition. Papillons, for instance, this year, uh, two dogs between them have won four best in shows. It's hot competition just for CCs in, in, in a lot of breeds? Well, I mean, in that particular breed, you've got, you've got two specific males, both of whom are very highly rated, um, which is a great credit to the breed and a great credit to the breeders involved. I think Whippets, Andrew, don't you? Yeah, I mean, Whippets is one of those breeds where you still have a large number of long-serving breeders and I think it's fair to say, you know, if, if you sit down and, and watch Whippet judging for any length of time, you'll see at least half a dozen dogs and you'll think, my God, that's, that looks a bit special. And I could imagine that being in a group. Did Bo not say yeah, that to Bo you? Bo Benson at Hound Show, well, uh, before he judged Best are. in Show, he sat watching Whippet Bitches and was in <laughs> amazed at the quality just of the bitches. Great to see, we've got quality in, in a number of breeds. So we have to jump into the top dogs in 2016, those that have massed more points than any other. However, there was a one dog this year with a very short campaign that probably had more of an effect than any other. And that is, of course, Devon, West Highland White Terrier, Croft's best in show winner. She was magical. Well, she had star quality from, from the get-go. Absolutely. I mean, the first time I saw her was in a puppy class in Scotland, and, and I don't think I've ever seen a puppy that had such an instant impact on me. At separate shows, I saw him as a puppy, National Terrier. We rang each other about this puppy. We were both so impressed with. And it was, it was very interesting that last year we sat here saying we thought she was one of the ones to watch, and also saying that we thought Derek Smith would put up the best dog there. Well, we were right on both counts. Absolutely. Yeah, exactly. But can we just say a little something about Marie Burns yeah. and her mother? Yeah. Um, and, and their dogs. And their dogs. <laughs> and I don't remember ever the continuation of the year enjoying the joy 
of Marie Burns. She has remained modest and with humility and to have Devon anywhere anybody would like to see her. <laughs> yeah. um, what a credit Marie Burns and her mother are. But she's got Devon, Marnie, Billy. Billy. She's their, only, their, their mother, presumably. Their mother. She's only got five or six dogs at home. Yeah, well, that's the, that's the mark of a very clever breeder. Yeah. And, I mean, as I said, when I was speaking about Devon at the Yukonuba Champion Stakes, where, where she oh. thrilled us beyond belief she was when a... she struck up a pose yeah, at the end of the carpet. Absolutely. I mean, I said then, the way that Marie has handled the press and the whole thing has been admirable. And that day at the Yukonuba Champion Stakes and Pup of the Year final was one of my moments of the year. Seeing yeah. Devon back in the ring, you feel cheated not having seen her again through the year. And a Derek Smith ring. and I sat together. Derek said she, she almost looks better than she did at Crufts. And she I, I, you know, I take nothing away from the other great dogs were there. But to me, Devon on that day was better than any other dog in that hotel. Mm, no question. She just was a star. But she's competing in the World Challenge. Yeah, so we get to see her one more time. So we get to see her one more time. At least one more time. <laughs> At least, yeah. At least. Hopefully, a couple of years' time, she'll be too good for Marie to resist. Um, now, we've got to move on to this year's top dogs. It's the top gun dogs first. Top gun dog, Vinny the Cocker Spaniel, show champion, Verati Vincenzo at Cassim. And one that's impressed you, Andrew. Yeah, I, I, I judged him once. I had him in... Uh in the group at Midland Counties. I had a huge shortlist, if I remember. You did? I think 16 or 17. <laughs> I knew you'd know the number, Boris. You see, Boris. we were watching together. <laughs> yes, yes, we were your yes. critical friends yeah. watching that. Um, but no, he's, he's so cockery. You know, he's a big ribbed, big bummed, waggy tailed cocker, you know, with a lovely head and expression. He looks like his breed, he moves beautifully. And, you know, he's one under a wide cross section of breed specialists and all arounders. And, um, yeah, I think he's an extremely good Cocker Spaniel. And he's taking your eye this year, does oh, as well. lovely. You know that lovely old expression, he looks at you right? He has the most wonderful eyes and expression, and when he looks at you, you know, he just is right. And as you say, consistent. 2015, 19 cc's. This year, 17 cc's. And a master total of 37. That's, that's impressive winning. Mm. And it's, it, that is a competitive breed. Mm. Yes, um, sure. So let's find out what Sarah's owner Vinny made of his incredible 2016. Top Gun Dog 2016, how does that sound? Absolutely amazing. I didn't have the vaguest idea that we were actually in the running for Top Gun Dog. I knew at the three quarter stage that we were third Top Gun Dog. But um, yeah, I had no idea until I saw it published. I had no idea. So yeah, absolutely amazing. Absolute dream come true. So yeah, it was brilliant. <laughs> and Vinny has had a, another amazing year, hasn't he? He has, yes. He's, um, he's had two more groups, runner up in the Yukonuba Champion Stakes. So he's made so many dreams come true for me. He really has. He's, uh, he's never let me down at all. He had a phenomenal puppy career, and then he just continued from that. And, the nicest thing as well is all his tickets, all his top honours have all come from breeders and judges that I've really respected and looked up to over the years. That's just made it even more special, really. So. Now, what does 2017 hold for Vinny? He's still going to be shown because he loves it so much. I don't want to retire him just yet, um, but he'll not go to quite as many shows. See what happens. Congratulations on 2016. Top Gun Dog. Amazing. I still can't believe it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Well, done. well, congratulations again to Sarah and Vinny, but we have to go on to our second place dog in the Gun Dog group. And I, this is uh, a big hairy Irish ginger one. The Irish set called Arthur. I find this an interesting story. I like Blake Cocker's style of handling. Do you remember he had a very good dog? Was it called something like Morrison years ago? And he, he went to Sweden and he brought in this puppy, a baby puppy, eight weeks old, brought it home, showed it with great success, won all his puppy classes, in fact became the youngest ever male champion in Irish setters at 23 months, something like that. But then one day his partner, um, Amelia Siddle, an old friend of ours, Ice Maiden, we remember. Talented artist. And a talented handler. And Blake and I were chatting about this and he said, she stood him up that day and he said, I never took him in again, because <laughs> she's better than me. Well, of course, she went on and did great things with the dog. 
he just is a stylish dog. He's beautifully presented. And it's, it's always a competitive breed, Andrew. Oh, Irish Setters always pull one of, the, one of the biggest entries in the group. And I mean, this is a breed where they go on showering until they're into veteran. Mm. Yeah. Well, that's our gun dogs covered. Come back after the break where we step into the top terriers of 2016. Welcome back to Around the Dog World at a very grand Stoke Rochford Hall. It's now time to turn our attention to this year's top terriers, Andrew and Di. And we start off the Norfolk Terrier. We spoke about her here last year, Martha, Kinsridge top tip. Yes, and we like seeing Di Jenkins because that's their competitive breeds, the Norfolk and Norwich, aren't they? Strong, clever breeders. Again, not huge Martin numbers, and, but they're no, always not, a few not big numbers, but a good one usually emerges. And Andrew, she's a bit of a charmer, isn't she, this Martha? She's got great personality, no question about it. And I just can't believe that we were sat here remembering her going best in show at Three Counties yeah. the previous year, because it only seems like a few months ago, yeah. which I suppose is a sign of old age. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. was 18 months ago she, she won best that's in show. That's yeah. right, yes. Yeah. Um, and she's gone on steadily, adding to a tally of CCs. Yeah. She's um, a very, very nice bitch. Um, and we move on now to our top terrier. And another amazing achievement for a kennel. Um, they won this prize in 2015 as well with a male Irish Terrier. Mm -hmm. 2016, a female Irish Terrier. Sarden, Irvin Hill, and Tony Barker. How do they do it year in, year out? Well, it's, 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 it's quite simple. It's breeding from top quality stock. And in, in Tony's case, um, he's got the advantage of, of having some very good foreign contacts. It's something we see more and more of these days, is an international cooperation between breeders who acknowledge that there are great dogs in other countries. And let's not forget the handler, Andrew. I mean, Johnny Averis, third generation. Yeah. He's not quite the slick um, professional. There's nothing flashy about him. No, John. nothing flashy. He's amiable and um, likeable and concentrates on the job without any ostentatious promotion. You notice what John is handling. Well, let's hear from Johnny and LKA about the year that saw them finish Top Terrier. Well, deja vu. Uh, we come to speak to you again, John. Top Terrier with an Irish Terrier. Yeah, uh, unbelievable, but I'm not going to say no. Great result. Yeah. Um, now, this one this year, uh, Liza, consistent the whole year through. Yeah, she's. I think she's been placed in every group she's got through to, and uh, yeah, she's been there or thereabouts all year, so yeah, brilliant. And, and the, the top awards this year, are any, any that stand out in your mind? Yeah, she won the ITA Club Show, which is uh, a great show to win. Uh, and she's uh, had two group wins, Driffield and East of England. She's got that certain sparkle that you can't put your finger on it, but she's got it in abundance. Yeah. And she's got a bit of an interesting background? Yeah, we, we bred her, me and Tony bred her. Uh, then she went out to America as a youngster at six months old. She was showed at Montgomery and yeah. she won all four days. Wow. And Westminster as well, she won there, which is another prestigious show in the state. So yeah. she had a great run there. Then she came over to me beginning of this year and uh, there we go. Well, congratulations. Who knows, we might see you again here next year as Top Terry, but congratulations on 2016. Thank you very much. We'll be trying. And Andrew, last year you gave last year's Top Terrier, the group at Midland Counties. Mm -hmm. This year we have the bitch who wins Top Terrier again. How do they compare, do you think? They're both extremely good Irish Terriers. It's one of those situations where you have two dogs like that. To, make, to answer your question, I would need to have the two dogs stood in front of me, <laughs> facing each other, and I'd make a decision on the spot. But they're, they're, they're both very, very good Irish. I think with every single best of breed, the Irish Terrier has gone on to take a group placing. Um, so it wasn't domination in the groups, but very consistent winning all the way through. Mm -hmm. Does that suggest that the Terrier group as a whole is a competitive one? It is a competitive one, I would say. Uh, it always has been. Um, uh, well, uh, are British dogs not based on our strong terriers? But the Irish Terrier, two American parents. Yeah, both Fleet Street mm. breeding. Um, if you go far enough back, you'll find some British breeding, I'm sure. Yes. And now we have to change it up again. Uh, this time it's the Dog World Arden Grange Top Working. And this is a repeat winner from 2015. 
2016's top working is of course Hector the Bouvier once again. So let's go and find out from Michael, his handler, about their achievements in 2016. So top working 2015 and then again in 2016 Hector the Bouvier. Let's go Lord of the Rings. You've got to be overwhelmed Mike. Yeah it's, it's been, it has been amazing three years with Hector. He's three years old now. Um, yeah it's been pretty incredible. Um, and you started handling him at the very beginning. We saw you at uh, Pup of the Year and he, when he went reserve. Must be fantastic to have a dog mature over yeah. the years. Yeah, it is nice. I mean, his first show, I mean, his first show in Puppy, he got the reserve ticket, I think. And then from then, he's just constantly grew and grew and grew. And then in breed level, and then winning the group at 13 months, and then just continuously giving, giving more constantly towards, for me, as a handler. Yeah, he's done great. And your biggest uh, win of the year? Crofts, obviously Crofts, 100%, <laughs> definitely. And that must be a special one under the judge as well. Yeah, Kerry Arvinen, he's a, 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 a massive international judge. Um, and he definitely someone who knows his stuff about a dog. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, next year, you've won top working two years in a row, but next year's a different story, isn't it? Yeah, Hector's not going to be out very much. Um, we'll try and bring him out for his avian so he can still come out of it. Um, but we've run out of CC judges, with Bouvier's only having, I think, 13 sets a year. Yeah. Um, I think he can only go to three CC shows. That's tough, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. I you must feel quite gutted having a dog as good as Hector, not being able to, to take him out. Yes and no. I mean, it's good because it gives him a break. Obviously, campaigning for so much, for so long, um, it's nice for him to have a break. And I mean, Fiona takes him to what I call it the Wooden Mansion in Majev, <laughs> and he loves it. And he runs it up and down the hills all the time, and it's a break for him. Yeah. Um, but we are campaigning him in, in Holland a lot, and he only needs one more point for his Dutch title, which is quite important for the, for the Bouvier breed. Yes. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so we'll, we can play with him a little bit over there and then bring him out over here. But then we've got the new litter as well, so we're bringing them out. That'll be exciting for this year, but what, for you as a handler, has made him so special? He's just a dog that keeps giving. He doesn't stop, and he's always pleasing. He, he, I think you've just got to make it fun for them, and if they do, they'll give. They'll constantly, constantly, constantly give, and he always does. So, top working, fifth top dog all breeds, champion Lisk Bort, Lord of the Rings. Yes. And this is a dog die that won you over in 2016. I, I have to hands up, I didn't see the potential that you two saw. I had in my eye Mo, the, the, the Bouvier that Dave um, Killerly handled a couple of years ago. And to me, he had all the essence of the breed, but I watched it develop until Richmond was the first time I really looked at him and thought, this is a great dog that I've underestimated. And Anne McDonald clearly thought the same. He went on to repeat his 2015 win again, best in show there. Uh, but Andrew, you saw him again when you were judging at Midland Counties in your working group, and you saw the potential there. Yeah, I mean, he, he, he was a young dog with, with so many qualities, but there was still a lack of overall maturity. Um, but then over the next 12 months, you watched him and, and the dog just blossomed. Well, you said from your Midland Counties judging to him winning the yeah, group at Crafts. I mean, that, that was a question of six months, basically. But lovely point is a young handler, Michael Craig, who has worked tirelessly with, with him all year. A very keen young handler. But then we're blessed with keen young handlers, aren't yeah. we? Was it the second, the Doberman? Yeah, second Doberman. Well, Doberman. now he oh, that's Doberman. another keen young handler. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> the kennel. Uh, of Fiona Lamberts has had an incredible run. In this competition, Dog World Arden Grange top working, they have won four out of the past five years. Amazing, isn't it? For, yes. for a small kennel like it that. It is. It is amazing. I can't remember a time when there wouldn't have been Boxer Dane, Dobrot kennel um, to challenge any Bouvier. There was somehow a gap, and, and Fiona and her kennel Mm. have done extremely well. But we spoke about Josh Henderson briefly. The Doberman he was handling to reserve top working this year won two best in shows through the summer. Mm. A fantastic year. Fantastic dog. All male. There's a lovely bitch, but a good kennel. I think they keep more than five. I think, yeah. I think they have numbers, but I they certainly seem to be consistent. A strong kennel consistently. Um, but again, I think Victoria is a very good example of a young breeder who has the intelligence, the savvy, to take advice from seniors within. Not just her mother, other senior doe people. Um, it, it's all the mark of an intelligent breeder. Um, it's a kennel to be admired, I think. And as you say, dog and bitch both doing a great deal of winning, both into, I think, 20 cc's plus. But the thing that impresses me with, with, with Josh is he is actually completely genuine in his desire to learn 
Yeah, he is. I, I, I mean, he's, he's, you know, he's building up the most amazing archives on the breed. He is. And our third top working in 2016, this is the Bernese Mountain Dog, champion Meadow Park High Class, taking over where his father left off, winning groups. Yeah, and he started winning groups very, very young, didn't he? Because this, this is a very slow maturing breed. Um, the Meadow, Meadow Park Bernese breed consistent quality dogs, breed good moving dogs, um, and their dogs are always beautifully conditioned, beautifully presented, which, which makes a difference. Absolutely. And as you say, still a young dog, so there's p- mm. potentially a lot more to see. Oh, yeah, I mean, this dog has a lot more to come, I'm sure. And Andrew, we now move on to a toy group. And what a year for the group it's been. Mm. Three toys in the top ten. And actually, yeah, we've remarkable. said that for the past five years, yeah. three toys in the top ten. It's not just a fluke. No, well, you see, remarkably, um, the toy group, and I mean, we've, we've discussed this previously privately, um, so often seems to have some of the best moving dogs that you see in the big ring. Um, which is slightly ironic because toy dogs were primarily bred to be beautiful, to be entertaining. I mean, they're, they're, they're companion lap dogs, basically. Um, and yet we see some of the soundest movement sometimes in the toy group, which poses all sorts of different questions. It does. Welcome back to Around the Dog World at the gracious setting, Stoke Watchford Hall, where we're running down all of 2016's top dogs. And Diane Andrew, time to turn our attention to the top toys. And Diane, incredibly, again, yeah. another repeat top dog. And I have no problem with that, Simon. I think they're both good dogs. Yeah. They're, di- they're, they're, they're different. Yes, they are different. They both excel in different exactly. ways. Exactly. So we're, we're, talking, we're, we're talking about two Papillons. So Travis is yeah. top toy this year, yeah. runner-up Jacob. Yeah. Incredible achievement for a breed to have two in the top yeah. ten. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I haven't made a secret of my admiration for the showmanship of Travis. I th- he's a little star, and, and I think that should be rewarded. That comes from having a husband who was a handler, I think. However, I very much like this other Papillon that I probably like the balance and the honesty of as much as I admire Travis for other virtues. Mm. Mm. I think two good dogs, don't you, Andrew? Yeah, well, I mean, the, the Jacob, as he called, Jacob, the Rosamy yeah. dog. Yeah, he was, he, was, um, he was my dog CC winner the last time I judged the breed. However, you got to feel for the other Papillon exhibitors. This year, Travis has won 14, yeah. Jacob's won 13 CCs apiece. Yeah. Scraps for any other dogs going. Well, funnily enough, I have seen a Papillon dog puppy that I think may come through and challenge, but I'm not going to go any further than that. <laughs> oh, God, now, a, now, we're, now we're really going to have to work that's on that. That's a tease. Um, but, of course, we have to speak to Glenn and Irene at LKA after their year-finishing top toy. So, this time last year, we were in this very position, speaking to the same people, because uh, you were top dog, but this year, top toy, congratulations. Thank you very much indeed. It's, it's amazing, just incredible. We, would, we didn't expect it. And uh, thank you very much indeed. <laughs> um, Glenn, his year has been phenomenal again. Yeah, completely. I mean, what he did last year was just pretty outstanding, wasn't it? Let's be honest. And what, but what he's continued to go on to do, um, that's that's quite challenging because you've been best in shows, which is you know more than he had last year. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, no. well done. Um, and last year you said you had to keep him going because he loves it. Where do you stand this year? We said he just turned four. <laughs> we have so you said he only turned last. three last year. <laughs> I don't know. It, I, I don't think we could stop showing him. That wouldn't be fair to him. And after all, you have to think about the dogs first. And you're not just thinking about what you want. You're thinking about what your dog wants. Yeah. So he will come out next year to do his little bit. He won't maybe not continually, but yeah, he'll still enjoy himself. But I breed CC record. It's your own. But he's yeah. he's ever so close. Oh. One, one away, <laughs> one. But um, yeah, it's our um, Starlight Kisses that holds the breed record. Well, it's just we just feel so blessed, don't we? Really. He loves it, and he's. You, you don't have to do anything really. You just have to keep him tidy, keep him presented, and he'll go out and do the rest. But he just is like he. For me, he is the epitome of what a Papillon should be. Congratulations again to Travis on another stellar year. But die third in our top toys 
Japanese chin, chin. Mm. Robson. And lovely, lovely. Something about a chin, isn't there? Because we were through the years of Pam Cross Stern and those astonish astonishing chins. You know, they're supposed Mrs. to be... Yeah. Mrs Crawford prior to that. Yes, absolutely. So we love that look of astonishment. We, uh, uh, chins are enchanting. Uh, we have to give credit to the kennel. He has really got the breed together and producing some very good stock. Tony Orcock, mm. I think his name. Mm -hmm. um, he's a very, it's a force to be reckoned with this man because he's not only showing good chins, it, there's now two or three other breeds he's involved in Chihuahuas. I've seen him with a good Charlie. Um, th this is a man who's come, who has excelled in another sport. He was a crown top bowler. bowler. Um, and is, is, um, understands how to achieve success in yet another sport. Yeah. Um, he's breeding good dogs. He handles and presents well. Um, I, I like his third. And we spoke about Jacob, obviously. Uh, he was best in show winner at LKA. Reserve to Jacob was the Pembroke Corgi die, Magnus. Yes. This is one you fond love. It's one with of this my year. favourites. Uh, he reminds me of some of the great Bellroids that Idris. I feel Alan and I have sat at the ringside and looked at that dog and said, if, if Idris was sitting with us, he would love this dog. He'd love that had an expression, mm. yeah. I personally feel some joy that Pembroke Corgi, that we are actually seeing good Pembroke, because they've rather wallowed in the... Breed, well, the breed dropped dramatically mm. in quality, where, and, and it, which coincided with the with the docking situation. It did. But, it, but as you say, it is a while since we've seen Pembrokes winning at this level. Mm. Mm. But we've seen cardigans mm. do some winning. Well, the cardigans seem to have gone up, yes, whereas the Pembroke seem to have dropped. Which I think is tragedy. So I'm delighted with this dog. Well, Magnus has finished the year on a high, hasn't he? Very much so, yeah. Yeah, couldn't have been better, really. <laughs> and we've just about missed him. He's, he's bypassed us everywhere we've been filming. He's right, not one. Okay. You've yeah. been winning everywhere else, apart from Birmingham National, where, of course, he was best in show. Yes, that's right, yeah. That's and got to be the highlight of the year. Oh, very much, yeah, because 10,000 dogs entered and uh, it's been such a long time since the PEM's done any sort of winning at that level. So it, it's great for the breed and we're really, really proud to sort of present the a good dog that can win at, at the top level, you yeah. know. Yeah. Uh, tell us a little bit about about Magnus. Is winning and and, and back row. Uh, well, we didn't show him much uh, last year. We we kept him at home, although he he did get his title. He took four tickets with four best of breeds and two group fours. Um, and then this year we sort of really set up set the motions going and um yeah he, he's um, managed to amass 17 cc's with 15 best of breeds and then well now four group ones three group twos three group threes so yeah we're extremely pleased how early did you know that he was special we knew really probably when he was about five six weeks he just stood away from the rest of the litter and we've actually got a photograph of him at 10 weeks standing on the training table and he was just a miniature version of what he is now and uh, he went through a few ugly stages and he was a bit of a sort of gangly puppy but knowing and having been in the breed for 40 years that if they're okay at 10 weeks then hopefully that will come through and and all the uh, the, the bad days will sort of come together again you know so that's champion pem carter thunderball yeah dog world arden grange top pastoral for 2016 but runner-up die another one that you've loved through oh, 2016 the, the, samoyed. the samoyed champion imperial cruise can't help it I, i'm sure i've said it before in my opinion, this is one of the great dogs of the last decade. I, it, what is it about the dog that it doesn't achieve more than it should achieve in my view? I think it's quite the most balanced dog. You like him, Andrew, don't you? Mm. I he just... has a very, very striking outline and he's a magnificent mover with a beautiful head and expression. The, the, the write-up that Curry Arvanen did on the dog at Richmond was just so accurate and so so touching in its accuracy. This dog says everything I want a Samoyed to say to me. I think he's almost underrated. Apart from by you. Apart from by me. <laughs> we still, he still managed seventh top dog yeah. all breeds. Yeah. And he has been winning now, it seems, for years. He was a group yeah, winner. He and best started very, very yeah. young. Group and this breed go show. on forever. Yeah. And Andrew, third top pastoral. This is a special one for you. Uh, Russell. 
bearded curly. Ah, the, the, the potted dale beardy. Yeah. yeah You're yeah, best not, in show winner at City Birmingham. That was interesting. I, I don't, I mean, I must have seen him obviously before. I certainly, ne I'd never judged him. You know, sometimes you get a dog that you think is so correct. Well, rather like you just said, Kari commented, yeah. commented about the Samoyed. I just looked and I thought, you know, there's not, I don't think there's anything I'd really want to change about this dog. And on the final go around, I mean, he held his top line perfectly, he held his, his tail perfectly. I thought, yeah, he's, he's really got to go best in show. So he did. <laughs> and now we have to move on again to the utility group, our penultimate group of the day. And Andrew, we just spoke about your bearded collie, your reserve that day, the white standard poodle, champion, yeah. American champion, yeah. Tyrone Power. <clears throat> It's quite a story on this dog, really, because the dog was going to Scandinavia. Then they brought him back to the UK, where he just sort of came out in a flurry, didn't he? And he, he had... Mike drove where, him over on the Thursday night. Title. Two shows, a club show and Blackpool Champ show. Got the ticket at both. But, I mean, he is such an upstanding, majestic animal with fantastic pigment. Um, the most wonderful coat texture, bearing in mind that he's white, and generally the whites don't always have fabulous coats. Beautiful head, Nick. I mean, he, he gives you that look, like you are a lesser mortal. <laughs> and that means there's just one utility dog left to go. And Di, this is another repeat group leader. Yeah. Uh, this is Tyler, champion yeah. Sealville. He's Tyler, the bulldog. Tyler is something of a phenomenon, isn't he? I mean, he thinks the whole thing's terrific. He loves the show ring, he bounces, he does. He's, he, he's quite reminiscent of, do you remember David and Christian's Cuthbert? Well, how could you ever forget Yes, him? of course, of course. A, a bulldog of champion, 30. Champion Tygarth Jacob of yeah. Kello. We have seen a bulldog like this before, but not a long time. This dog has great personality, great appeal. He appeals to people who have not before been enchanted by bulldogs. Mm. Um, he's healthy, he's probably done a lot for the breed, convincing people that they should own a bulldog. Um, and his, his record is tremendous. He's had a wonderful time. And Andrew, he, movement, I think, is a, a key area where he wins. Yeah, I mean, the, the, he, he won the CC under me when I judged the breed. And the dog is an extremely good moving dog. He handles himself. Paul lets him show on a loose lead. He goes around the ring. As Daddy said, he's, you know, he just he loves it and he thinks it's all a joke. But he's also a very sound dog. And I mean, this, this is what's obviously appealed to the all-rounders that have judged him in groups. Mm. Tyler certainly has had a fantastic 24 months. Top utility twice in a row. You, you can't argue with that. But the prize he was really after this year, top dog. So come back after the break and we'll head to the NEC at LKA to find out who ends the year. Top Dog 2016. Now, if you're watching Around the Dog World last month, you know our top dog. However, if you weren't, we'll keep you in suspense a little longer. Now, Tyler the Bulldog had been leading Top Dog almost all year. But Hazel the Whippet had drawn level by mid-November and in early December won a CC and Best in Show at a club show, putting her three points ahead. With 13 points on offer at LK for both dogs, it was all up for grabs. So let's go and see what happened at the NEC to decide. Dog World, Arden Grange, top dog. We have had a rather exciting weekend. At the moment, because of yesterday's proceedings, Hans didn't give the Bulldog anything in the group. He shortlisted it. So that means we have joint top dogs. So let's go and see how the other dog, the Whippet, is doing in the breed ring. So here we are, very nearly the end of the day here at LK. And second in line, just passing us now, Hazel the Whippet. This is the bit's challenge. All the class winners and unbeaten dogs. So judges. Judge has got a CC in her hand, and this is where the decision counts. Let's see what she does. We have our decision. Dog World Arden Bridge, top dog, 2016. <laughs> Hazel, I think it's safe to say Charlie's rather happy about that. <laughs> well, Dog World Arden Grange, top dog, 2016, is Hazel the Whippet. And as you might have seen, uh, you got rather emotional. <laughs> just a little. I couldn't believe it. Just, just everything. Just everything from this year, and just all comes down to today. <laughs> today, it was, it was 
there was some tension around the ring, wasn't there, Lee? Oh, there was a lot of tension. I mean, to come down to the wire on the very last show of the year, you know, it's <laughs> nerve-wracking to say the least, really is. But, yeah, she's done us proud, absolutely done us proud. And, yeah. I mean, on social media, you, you're not backward in coming forwards about how much you love this this girl here, are you? No, I mean, she just absolutely means... God. <laughs> <laughs> just means everything to me, and you know Win or lose, just she's just the best dog I've ever had, and you know what? No one ever, no one ever come close to her. Nothing will compare to her. <laughs> she's getting washed <laughs> out. Lee, Lee's going as well. Oh Lee, where, your highlight of the year? Uh, Got to be Crofts. Yeah, I mean her first group and reserve best in show. What more can I say? But then of course we went on and got the best in show at Welks, and then best in show at the Hound Show. <laughs> and she she's not old, is she? So do, are we gonna are we gonna see more? Hopefully, yeah. I would. I would hope so. She'll. There's a lot of judges coming up now that have given her something, so she'll have a wee rest and hopefully come back up better than ever. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe some maternity duties. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, we're looking down those lines, obviously. So she's a young bitch. Yeah, I think there'll be plenty more time in her yet. And we've we've spoken to spoken to you quite a lot, Charlie. But Lee, what for you? Why is Hazel top dog? Well, I picked her out at three days old, you know, not knowing, obviously, we were going <laughs> to do that. At two weeks old, I hadn't changed my mind. And then when we picked her up um, at eight weeks old, you know, she, she just had it all for me. And I can remember saying to Charlie at her very first show, if you don't win, I'm going to cry, <laughs> just like I'm doing now. Um, just loves it. She just loves showing. Well, I mean, 20 cc's this year, you know, oh, my 21. God. 21? Oh, my God, forgot today's, yeah. 21 cc's this year, what? what? But it's just absolutely amazing. I, mean, it, I think she got 13 reserve cc's as well this year, did she? <sighs> Heck, you know. <laughs> but, Charlie, you were nervous today. Yes. But you were joint top dog anyway, weren't you? I know, do you know and I said, even coming second behind that the bulldog, it's gorgeous. And to be joint with them, and then to even just be top dog, it's just I just don't even have words for it. I just well, can't even explain it. Oh, congratulations again, uh, and hopefully, hopefully have another another great year next year, whether that's in the whelping box or in the ring. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you. Well, it took until 4 p.m. on the last day of the final show of the year, but our Dog World Arden Grange top dog for 2016 is Whip It Hazel, champion nothing compares to you at CrossCop. A worthy winner, Andrew. Yes, I mean, she, she'd been consistent throughout 2015 in the breed. Um, I think everyone noticed her, obviously, at Crufts. Yeah when she went reserve best in show. I think in the, in the home group at Crafts, actually, most people thought that she was a little bit special. She's classic. Beautiful lines, sound moving, calm, composed, quiet, young handler and co-owner. And as we've just seen, I mean, that was, that was an overwhelming display of emotion, which I can understand. I mean, the, the, the tension going into that class must have been, you know, phenomenal for anyone. Yeah, yeah. Um, much less someone of her. Ten, oh, let ten me videos. tell you, Simon's excitement was palpable. <laughs> I mean, he was. Yes, so yes, you did seem to get a little carried away. Yeah, it, it was. So it was fan thrilled. fantastic it was a to watch. Time. Knowing that everything is in the balance in that one moment. Yeah, yeah. Um, to the wire. You can I find it interesting that all her winning really has. No, I know she won well in the breed, but her main winning, her group winning, has, be, has been all this year. Except, let's have a little credit for our friend Ken Sinclair, who was actually the only person who had found a place for her in a group during 15. Ken has a great eye as a breeder and as a judge, and uh, I like the idea that Ken had spotted her before anybody else for a group placement. Yeah, and slightly unusually for a whippet, she has a bit of sparkle as well. Yes, I mean, you know, I suppose it's a breed. It's not an extrovert breed. No. no. Again, a lot of this will be down to a handler mm. who, who brings out that yeah. little bit of personality. They can be charming. But what a year for her. Yeah. Uh, an all breed best in show. She won the three biggest town groups of the year, Crufts, yeah. Hound Show, Hound Association yeah. of Scotland. And to back it up, 21 cc's in a breed like Whippets. Yeah. It's incredible. Incredible. 
Well, the, the, the win under Bo Banks must have meant a lot. Now we have to move on down the Hound group. Uh, second place die, uh, following Hazel into runner-up Top Hound, Nora yes. the Beagle, who yes. we saw in the last programme yes. in the Hound group at LK. Yeah. Funnily enough, cast your mind back, before we got to the handler, of all the things Andrew said about that whippet. Honest, basic, good make and shape, well put together, sound mover. All of those things apply to that bitch of Jill's. She is undoubtedly a good bitch. She took us by storm in minor puppy and puppy, and every CC that was thrown at her, I was totally understood. Um, and of course, over the, over the course of the year, has toppled the, the long-standing breed CC record as well. I have to say, shown fearlessly, and mm. there were several times I was at the ringside when she had to stand second to that good bitch of Serena. Well, and, and there are other good bitches around. Mm, there are. And Andrew, she, she impressed as a youngster, didn't she? Oh yeah, I remember giving her best puppy at Welsh Kennel Club, I think it was. I mean, I would happily have owned her on that day. She was a beautiful puppy. Mm. We've covered 2016's top winners, but what are your moments of the year? Um, well, the, the first, which we, we have actually mentioned, but I mean, it, it, I'm going to repeat it. And that was when I was doing my little tribute on the microphone to Devon at, at the, Champions, at the Stakes. Champions Stakes final. And I mean, it's something that I will never, ever forget. The three times I was most thrilled through the year were seeing um, Devon, the Westie at the Ukanuba thing. Uh, Magic Mike won a group at Driffield and did a lap of honour because it was felt that the judge was too yeah. close a friend. On that day, if ever there was a best in show winner, it <laughs> was that dog. And the other time was Gucci, that shepherd that won a group under, I think it was Liz Cartledge at Leeds. It was felt that the judge was too yeah. close a friend. The shepherd that day did a lap of honour and that day had Best in show written all over it for me. So I think if I had to choose the three days that I looked at three dogs that just stood away, they'd be the three days. Isn't that amazing? And they weren't, none, no, none, none of them were in competition. Challenge for it. <laughs> no, no. Yeah. No. The, the moment that was very touching for me this year was the Pup of the Year in the Champion Stakes. We saw Gavin and Sarah Robson get very emotional. Well, as a, a baby, effectively, um, he won the Pup of the Year final, and on the same day followed it up with the champion stakes, both of which were very hotly contested. Yeah. And he's got a lot to live up to. Mother, well, uh, well, as a breeder, I would like to say he is his mother's son. <laughs> well, and the, he si has the, sire, and the sire is an outstanding oh, dog outstanding. as well. I think actually one, one of the most touching moments of the year um, you know, Melanie Spavin had a great year. She won Best in Show with two different breeds, the Australian Shepherd and this young Beagle um, at Midland Counties. Yeah. I just thought it was so lovely that her grandmother, Marion, was there. Her mother, Diana, was there. And their business partner, Stuart Milner, was there to watch it. And, and when the dog won, it, it, it just made me a little bit sort of tearful. Well, there we are. We've pretty comprehensively covered 2016, I think. Um, and at this time last year, we asked you to make some picks for winners move might see last year. One of those, of course, was Devon, the mm. Westie. Uh, Cross best and show winner. So full marks. Yeah, uh, yeah, we did all right with the Westie, didn't we? We sure <laughs> did. Yeah. Uh, 2017. See if we can do as well this year. Yeah. <laughs> 2017. <laughs> I doubt. Who that. do you th think? Well, you see, so, so much, you can ask a question like that. So at the end of the day, so much of it depends on the breed judges. Mm. I mean, I would, I would say that um, provided he can get out of the breed, um, I, I think this English Springer from Australia is, a, is mm. a, he has huge potential. In a big ring, he will make waves. Yeah. Great yeah. handle. Die anyone for you? Yes, it's a funny thing, Simon. Nice for you, Andrew, so pay attention. Um, <laughs> uh, earlier, last year, I was doing a, a St Bernard seminar, so went to Tan Negresha's, which is the best place to see a number, and asked if I could look at his dogs or move and whatever. And in, in, a, in a kennel, he had a grubby, muddied up young Pyrenean. A couple of, no, months later, I happened to be watching Liz Cartledge do beagles, and you were in the next ring, Andrew doing Pyrenean mountain dogs. Midland Counties. So, yes, yeah, so my interest, uh, you know, <laughs> and I suddenly looked over and I saw a Pyrenean that just filled my eye more than, and it's a breed I like and I judged a lot. But he oh, walked in the ring and 
he was, he was uh, one of the most exciting. On the back of the yeah, he was dogs, one of the most exciting he? dogs I saw last yeah. year, certainly. Yeah. N- n- those are some some fantastic picks, but I mean, we've we've gone through this top dog list, and a lot of them we'll be seeing more of next year. We've got uh, Magic Mike, the Whippet, the Bracco. We shall see more of that, Peter. Piper. Yeah, Peter okay, Piper, like the Samoyed. So, our rings are going to be full this year of top quality dogs. It sounds. I think they always are. Just let's hope they're full of top quality judges to find them. <laughs> well, there you have it. You've heard it here first. Watch out for those dogs in 2017. Uh, thank you very much, Andrew and Di, and Simon Parsons, who's helped us through all the results this year. Uh, and looking forward to 2017. Uh, thank you very much for watching. A massive congratulations to all of 2016's winners, including, of course, Hazel, her owners, Charlie, Lee, and George. Now come back next month to see us at our first stop in 2017, Manchester. But let's play you out with the dog world Arden Grange top dog, Hazel the Whippet. Mm-hmm.